All right, so I foolishly started coding without turning the machine on. So what we did was we went to project, add reference, and we, under here, we added, this was not checked, we added the Microsoft Visual Basic by clicking on it and then checking it, all right? And then we came back to our program, and at the top, we put using Microsoft.VisualBasic right there at the top. Then we came down again into our program where we're going to do the binary search and we added this code. Let's, let's actually run this, move this, click this. I don't know if this will work or not, but now move this. Good. Now we can see where everything is. All right. So enter a number between 1 and 100 to search for. And the number is array. All right? That doesn't look too bad. It's not the greatest, but it's pretty self explanatory as far as what we want, right? Okay? And then enter 1 to 100 here. That's what this is. These are defaults, the minus 1 that are in the end. So don't worry about them. Okay? But the problem that we have right now, I'm not going to fix this problem. I'm going to tell you what the problem is, but I'm not going to fix it. That is, what if I put hello in there? It's going to blow up. You know how to fix that. You're going to have to do the try parse. I don't feel like keying that in right now. All right? So that's something you should be able to go in and fix for yourselves. All right? Now, I can go and put a number in here. So I can put in 34. Hit enter. Nothing happens. Because we didn't write that code yet. Does that make sense? So we're going to write that code in just a second. My question is, though, in what we've got here so far, does what we're doing in here make sense to you? I have a question. Yes. Why did we do 16 instead of 32? It wouldn't matter. You can put 32 in here. But the, the number goes between 1 and 100. The difference between those is it's a 16-bit integer versus a 32-bit integer. The 16-bit integer is I think got a value of it, if it's I think it's in the billions and this 32 bit is in the like the quadrillions or whatever one of those things so it really doesn't matter but if you're if you're happier with the 32 it really it's a good question but it doesn't matter I don't know why they just didn't have a regular two int but they don't all right that's just the way this language works all right so right now we're returning the value guess what the value isn't being set. Hopefully everybody agrees with that. You know, it's, you know, we've got in here what? We've got the value equals convert this. Okay. But we're returning the value. But right now, it, does, it isn't finding anything is what I'm saying. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to do something different here that we haven't done. We're going to put in here, remember this, this routine right here? that we get the error for display binary search results. All right. <clears throat> We're going to call that in just a minute. But I want to make sure I'm giving the right names to you. Okay. So instead of returning the value here, we're going to return array dot binary search. You may remember this, you may not. But it says, what do you want to search? We want to search numbers. For what? We want to search it for the value. Now it'll make sense. <clears throat> now if we put a 34 in there, and you need two prints here, okay? Now if we put a value in there, if 34 is in there, it'll tell us it's in the array and at what position it found it, and if it's not in there, it'll return negative one. <clears throat> Does that make sense to everybody? Because that's how the binary search function works. And we've looked at it, but this is the first time we're actually using it. Okay? I decided to keep the binary search thing out of your test. You feel free to do it if you want to, but you don't have to. There's nothing on the test that asks you to do it. All right. <clears throat> so now we're almost done, but we have to write this routine right there. 
do binary display binary search results. So right underneath, right underneath where we just wrote do a binary search, I'm going to put another routine there that's display binary list results, and I've got my found variable. Okay. This really isn't a super long routine. It is one, two, about 10 lines long. All right. I'm going to grab my message box that I had up here just so I, I don't have to do a lot of retyping. So I'm going to grab that message box. Okay. Now, I already told you what this means. Somebody tell me. Can somebody tell me what that line of code means? Yeah, it means found equals negative 1. No. It means the value was not in the array. So if that's the case, I'm going to put in So if it returns negative 1, it wasn't in there. Well, if it doesn't return negative 1, it was in there. That makes sense? So I'm going to just, I'll just copy all this stuff. In fact, let's, let's put not here. There. And I'll say here, value found in array. Okay, that's a little nicer. Somehow I lost that. So Now, if I want to, I can sit there and say, I can tell you where it was found, right? All right, how can I tell you where it's found? I can tell you where it's found because... That's what found is. It's got the position in there, if there is one. All right. Now, you're all very trusting, but I'm going to run it again. And there's my numbers. Okay. So, binary search. Immediately, you can see it's now in ascending order. It has to be that for that. So, let's try one that's not in there. 37. Value is found at position negative 3. Well, that's not right, so something's screwed up. All right, I know that. Something is wrong. All right, but I want to run it again, and I want to put in a number that is in there. So, 28. Value found at position 0. That's good, because we know that it's not in there, or that it's in there, and it's actually showing us the right position. So if I put 98 in there, if I run it again, and I put in 98 says found at position 9. Those are working. All right. The other one's screwed up, so we have to look at what the other one says. All right. Well, here's the problem. The problem is you have no guarantee it's going to actually return negative 1. So we're going to change this to less than or equal to negative 1. Did you see the value it gave us? It said negative 3. All right, so that's what found was equal to. So instead of saying equal, equal, negative 1, I'm going to say less than or equal to negative 1. Make that change. Now I'm going to run it again. 
I'm just going to go through the whole gamut now. Display array. Boom, we got a new array. Display lowest. 23. Good. Display highest. 96. Looks good. Display sum. 671, which means our average should be 67.1. And it is. It already is in ascending order, but I can click that. Descend, I wasn't. Descending order. I can binary search. I can search for something I know is in there, 23. Found it at position zero. I can search for something I know is in, in there, 24. Not found in the array. All right. I can clear the list box. I can exit. And I can do help. Okay. Now, there's one more change I'd make. You don't have to. Everybody see this? I don't like that that's empty. You already know what we have to do to do that. We have to call fill array, and we have to call, you know, write it to the list box or whatever the heck that was. So we can do that in our clear routine. Again, we don't have to do that. All right. And in our clear box, we're calling clear list box. So I can clear it. Then I can say fill array. And what was it called? Something to the list box. I don't remember. Copy to, to list box. Copy array to list box. You don't have to do that. Always as a programmer, be anticipatory. In other words, think to yourself, you know what, that, that, that person who's running this program might be somebody who doesn't even understand when you click the list box that, you know, they, that they have to click the display array again to get new numbers. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run it. Know what the problem is? Ah, okay. Because there's nothing. Probably because there was nothing. Let's see. The runtime refused to evaluate the expression. I've never seen that error before. That's a neat error, though. Okay. Okay. I guess you're right. So clear list box is called in fill array. All right. So and let's get that out of here. Pardon me? Ah, okay. You're saying put them in here. Not there. Oh, jeez. All right. I know what you're saying. I just copied the wrong thing. That's all. All right. So get that out of there. And then in here, put fill array and put copy array to list box. I think that's what you're saying, right? All right. Well, that's good. Now, if we click clear, we get new numbers. Now, if you find that confusing, then don't put that in there. Because you might look at that and go, it didn't clear. Yes, it did. But it does it so fast that it replaces it with new numbers. So that's up to you as to whether you think that's a better way to write it or a worse way to, way to write it. All right? Is there anybody who needs any of this code? I don't want to even print this thing out. All right? But is there anybody who needs any of this code repeated? There's something that you don't have? There's something that doesn't work right? I got an error on whenever we call the term highest in there, but I'm not sure why. Okay.
because that's everything right there. So you might want to check and make sure that's how yours looks. Anybody else? Now, again, you don't have to do this, but you may want to tomorrow have this up. All right, you may want to have this up and then start up another version of, uh, of Visual Studio. Again, do you have to do that? Hell no. I, I don't know. You, know. you may find that confusing to do that. If you do, then don't do that. All right? And I will even go so far as to tell you this. All right? I ask you to write the program as a console app. That's 60 of the 100 points. Then I ask you to convert it into a GUI app. So you should have all the logic once you get done with that. All right. Now, it's all partitioned off with points and stuff. Some, you have to do certain things before you can do other things. So I know what happens. You know, I hear people tell me, well, I got really, it's close to the end of class, so I just want to do this. It was worth 25 points. But if you don't do the thing above it first that, that's worth 5 points, you can't even do the thing that's worth 25 points. You see what, I mean, what I'm saying? All right. There is no binary search in here. I didn't know, really, when I was creating this, I did not know how long it would take you. So what you'll have is a, is a, a page with four pages on it. Page one will be all instructions for how to do it console. Page two is a, a sample run. Page three will be how to do it in GUI. Page four will be a sample run. Now, you don't have to exactly make it look like mine, but I'm showing you the way that it should look, because I don't want you to, to waste your time, especially with the GUI, making the interface. All right? Anybody need anything else repeated? Anything else that's in here? And if, if you're still having problems, Josh, I'd be glad to come over there and try to help you. All right? Am I right in assuming that with the other seven of you, you got it to work? All right, because that should be enough. You know, if you say, well, should I study tonight? I look at this program and see if I understood it. And then when you come in tomorrow, before I hand the test out, I'll try to remember to say, are there any questions? But if there are, then ask before the test. All right. Are there any questions right now other than, than helping you with that? Did that fix it or not? That fixed that part. Yeah. Okay. Anybody? All right. 